Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wolf Pack. Now I just wrapped up a very, very long review of Merchant's Cove. It was really fun to film, but let me tell you, it was extremely exhausting. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen that one. I started that video as always with an idea thinking like, oh, you know it'd be really cool if I separated each merchant and gave them like their own unique highlight, do some different B-roll, push my table off to like the windows over there, try something different, have some new scenery and new lighting conditions and yeah. I love making videos. I love making videos about board games, but sometimes I just dig myself into a really deep hole of the ideas that need to come to fruition. Not want, need, need. Okay, now today, um, first off, thank you to Jenna for starting this tabletop tag and for tagging me in her recent video about a couple, a couple weeks ago. And it was all about just answering a lot of fun questions to just get to know content creators a little bit more. And the first question on her list was name, age, and location. So my name is Tim Chuan. I know a lot of people ask about my last name often, how you pronounce it. It's just like you're chewing gum. So super easy. And age, I'm 30. I'm 30 years old now. And location, I am in Southern California. I don't know why I had to think about that. But I'm like in LA, Southern California area. I was born and raised here. I absolutely love it here. And I can't imagine myself living anywhere else. Question number two, what was your favorite childhood board game? I honestly have to say, like the first one that comes to mind has to be Mousetrap. Let me know in the comments below if I should do a, should I do a cinematic, a cinematic showcase of Mousetrap updated 30 years later? Okay, I didn't play when I was zero. I played it maybe when I was like five. Five, we had like a broken set. Like the whole building, the contraptions and everything, there was like a shoe that kicked the marble down and it fell through like a bathtub and then the net fell down. It was like the coolest commercial. And the mouse trap itself was super cool. Did I know how to play it? No, but it was, it was really fun to put together. That would be super fun though. Like even as an April Fool's joke, I know one of you commented way back when about making a cinematic for Monopoly or something for April Fool's Day. I still want to do that. Maybe it'd be, that'd be a fun idea to do like a cinematic showcase of Mousetrap and just see what I can do with it. That'd be really fun. Um, and side note too, I was so close to filming a multiplayer gameplay this weekend, but Plans fell out. I got this microphone though, kind of testing different mic setups. If you haven't seen me kind of using this mic, um, this is the DJI mic. They just came out with it. I'm trying a new lav mic to see different player setups. I feel like I'm leaning towards this one because the audio does sound a little bit more crisp, a little bit more, there's more body to it versus a group microphone. However, this one is just easier and also doesn't have to ruffle through the clothes and everything. So definitely experimenting with that so I can get some more gameplays in with people, a lot of people in here. A lot of people being four. All right, question number three. When did you really get into the board game hobby? I would have to say like 2016 probably is, if I were to put a date on it, definitely would be that year because that was when I first backed my first Kickstarter, which was Mythic Battles Pantheon, huge miniatures game. So things haven't changed that much since then. And that's when I really got into it. After that, I just backed a bunch of Kickstarters back to back just because they looked cool with a bunch of minis. I was on board for it at that time. A, a lot different now, I would hope to say. There's a lot more substance that I look for in board games nowadays. And that leads me to question number four, which was what was the very first board game that I purchased? I think it was Small World. At least that was the one I remember the most. I'm looking over here because Small World's on my shelf. But Small World definitely I would say was the first board game that I purchased and ended up getting like almost every single expansion for it. I've always loved combat and area control. Sorry, Jenna, I know like she's not big on area control and everything, but I'm gonna change that when we play Dwellings. So I loved area control, I just loved fighting. And at the time that was the only combat game that I knew of and my family loved it too. My friends loved it. It was such a good entryway board game. Still, to this day, I still absolutely love this game. I do need to get the updated World of Warcraft version though, that'd be really fun. I wanna add on a question to all of you to kind of piggyback off of this one, but is there any game in your collection that you think you wouldn't have bought five, 10 years ago, maybe when you first started playing board games versus now? Because I don't think Small World, I would have bought like today. With my purchase mentality today, I don't think it's something that I would have bought because it just seemed it just seems oversimplified. Like just listen to this, in order for you to fight, you're just spreading out tiles across different maps on a board. 
It doesn't sound fun, but it's still incredibly fun and I love Small World. It hits home. I don't know, but like knowing myself and knowing the way I purchase games nowadays, I really feel like Small World is in a title that I would have purchased today versus X amount of years ago. So there's that. In case you're wondering, I'm still debating on which game to cover next. It's between Honey Buzz, Merchants of the Dark Road, and some more Marvel Champions expansions content. So let me know in the comments below which one you want to see next while I try to set up this game and learn it for some a game night later this week. Okay, on to our next question, which is any hobbies other than board games? I love to cook. I cook pretty often, at least two or three times a week. Maybe even Street Fighter 2, honestly. This game needs to be played, but I didn't hear many good things about this one, so that's why I've always been scared and why it's still in shrink wrap. But yeah, I love cooking and I always try to make a new recipe maybe once every two weeks if I get a chance to. I actually just made some al pastor tacos, like fancy ones. I got the whole shawarma spinning machine and like learned the marinade for it. So if my friends um, ever come over, I always like to make some new things for them. Um, I definitely want to make some homemade tortillas too and that'd be really, really fun. Okay, next question, your breakthrough game. Okay, I know this isn't the way the question was intended to be answered, but I'm gonna answer it a little bit differently. So breakthrough, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit because so it doesn't like piggyback off of what got you into this hobby and when did you start playing board games. But instead, I would say breakthrough game as a content creator, which the game that made me want to keep creating content definitely was Archmage and Everdell. Um, I sold Archmage because I ended up not liking it at all. You can check out my review on that <laughs> later. Because again, you know, as gamers, we grow too. We are changes, our taste changes or evolves a little bit. And Archmage kind of was just my breakthrough game in terms of, it was something that I really enjoyed filming and something that made me realize I and like loved making tutorials about board games until this year. Um, I don't like making tutorials at all anymore actually because they're just, I don't know how Rodney does it. Rodney from Watch It Play, I have no idea how you do it um, and how, how you have the patience to consistently make amazing tutorials. Same with um, John Gets Games too. They just have amazing patience, but they're also like, they get rules like right to the T. I don't, I, do, I know I miss them like once, twice. I try not to, I try my best not to miss anything, but it's hard. Tutorials are very, very difficult to make and they're very time consuming to make, so. That's why I stopped making tutorials. I don't enjoy it as often as um, reviews. Plus reviews open up room for discussion and I love talking about these games with all of you. So, in tutorials, there's not much uh, room for that. Archmage was the game that even if I don't like it now, and even if it was the game that got me started on something I don't enjoy anymore, it definitely pushed me towards making content creation um, and all this. Okay, next question. A theme that always draws you in. It's always going to be like fantasy for me. Fantasy themes are definitely huge. Like, let's go check out my collection real quick. Okay, in general, if there's a fantasy themed board game, I feel like that's the best word to put this umbrella over these types of games. But if there's a fantasy themed game, I'm usually very, very on board. Like Everdell, Fantasy, World of Warcraft, Iwari, Small World. Ashes, like that artwork, I feel like those all have very similar looks. Villainous, Root, Merchants of the Dark Road, Cerebria, we got Marvel United over here, Fort, Unfair, Merchants Cove, Tang Garden, Tidal Blades. Like, see, there's this constant theme throughout all of these games that I always lean towards, and it's definitely fantasy. If I were to narrow that a little bit more, I would say like mage-themed games, like Black Rose Wars. I've been talking to a friend about it on Instagram. I love mage-themed games, but I haven't found many, if any at all, uh, mage games that are good. So Black Rose Wars definitely is something that I am leaning towards getting, definitely high on my list for next board game purchase. Like if there's any spell casting involved, I'm usually very, very interested and excited about the game anyway. If there were any that were out of the norm from here, maybe you all see something that I don't. Like Brass Birmingham might be the only one that is somewhat out of this norm, but you know, that clean white aesthetic, simple like that, that was why I originally purchased the game. Um, quick little story, a very, very sad story. A very, very sad story, Brass Lancashire. 
the other version of brass, I ran over it with my car. How? Well, I was taking pictures on a railroad of brass and I left it on top of my car and then I drove off and then it fell off my car and then another car ran over it. So I didn't run over it actually, but another car ran over it before I got to it and uh, I lost that game that day. It literally was crushed to pieces. The only thing I did save though were like the poker chips. I might have them somewhere here. Here. <laughs> the one thing that survived from running over that game that day were these expensive poker chips, the iron clays. Okay, this is fun. I'm really enjoying this question so far. Next one is the newest game or games in your collection and have you played it or them? Well, aside from Honey Buzz that I'm setting up now, I did purchase that one. I have a whole video dedicated to unboxing a bunch of games. I don't know like half of them, so you'll, you'll see more of that when that video comes out soon. But aside from Honey Buzz and the new ones that I'm going to make a whole video about unboxing, that's pretty much it. And Marvel Champions, the latest expansion. Sinister Motives, definitely new to the collection as well. I can't wait to get into this, but I want to get through like Red Skull and the other ones before I open this one up. Okay, next question is favorite player count. It's going to be two, of course, because I always play with my fiance, Jackie, and we, um, I think we like just, you know, love having that intimate player count, of course, but I would say aside from that, maybe three, four, I don't really have a favorite player count to be honest because I feel like the games dictate the player count that I play at. But like three sometimes is fine because we'll have like one of our friends over playing with us and we'll play like recently Wonderland's War. That's really fun at three. Four players, it's cool if you have like a 2v2 like Disney Sources Arena. I'm super excited to show you content about that too. So 2v2 battles with a four player count is really fun. Dwellings is super fun at five. Scythe is fun at five even though it takes super long. So I don't really have one that I gravitate towards. It's honestly more so the conditions that are already set. Like if we have people coming over, then I'll adjust to that. But aside from two, I don't really have a favorite player count. Next one, a mechanism you don't like or that you aren't good at. Um, is this question tailored towards me? Because I don't know what you mean by a mechanism that you aren't good at. I'm just kidding. I'm just totally speaking out of my ass here because you know what? I honestly suck at games. I know I cover games. I know I have a ton of games, but I'm so bad at them. I will literally lose every single game, except Aquatica. For some reason, that game just clicks with me. But the mechanism that I don't like, I may be hurting some people here when I say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because I'm gonna be 100% truthful. I don't like roll and writes. I cannot stand roll and writes. Here's why. Okay, first off, I know a ton of people love roll and rights. Nothing wrong with that. Please feel free to love whatever type of games you want. Um, I know <laughs> Kavre loves roll and rights. I know Jenna loves roll and rights. She just played Hadrian's Wall. I, I don't know what it is. It's like the one roll and right I do like is Rolling Realms. Not because I have worked for Stonemaier. I've taken photos for it, but you know, it just really is a fun game. That would be like the minor exception to the roll and write rule. It's just really fun seeing all these worlds built together. And playing as the Oracle in Merchant's Cove, I really liked too. Those are probably the rare instances where I did enjoy roll and rights, but I just don't find it as thrilling or as fun to be writing numbers with a dry erase marker. Like even if Rolling Realms is one of the few exceptions to that, would I take it out and play it? No, because I just don't like rolling rights in general. Would I willingly choose to play with the Oracle Emergence Cove? No, because I don't like rolling rights. So those are exceptions. So even if they are the exceptions, would I choose to actively pursue them? No. That's why you don't see any rolling rights in my collection aside from those two. Next one, read the rulebook or watch a how to play video. Yes, I will do both. I will usually leave um, Rodney's video playing as I'm like working so I can like get it all in my head and so I can visualize everything. And I also refer, I also refer back to his video quite often as I'm learning it, if he has one on it. If not, John Gets Games is my go-to for videos. John is so good at like showing how games are played before you play, of course. They're really good at play through. So I always learn from those three uh, in my like majority for videos at least. Like videos will get me primed to learning so that way when I go through the rulebook, it's actually a lot faster. I feel like just listening to it and seeing it like being actually physically being played, that usually helps a lot 
for me learning the rule book a lot faster and for me absorbing information. And yeah, when it comes to teaching, I like distill down the rules to the T. I can make a whole video about this, but once I was taught a game and like how to play it for like an hour and 10 minutes, like no, one, that's like a lecture in class. No one's going to retain all that information to hearing you speak for an hour and 10 minutes. Like I don't want to talk for that long either. So what I usually try to do, um, that same game, by the way, I taught in like seven minutes because all the nuances, you don't really necessarily need to teach people. There are a lot of things that you can omit and teach them as you go. So video as a primer and then read the rule books. And then as I teach the game, which I'm probably going off a tangent off anyway, I usually always break it down to like the shortest amount of time possible and the simplest mechanisms as possible. If you prime people that you're playing with, with like easy to learn words like, oh, all you're doing on your turn is playing this card. That's it. And then I layer those rules with everything, uh, all the nuances that I mentioned. That usually gets people playing faster. And the like the little details, you can keep that to yourself as like a rule teacher because they're so conditional. And if they come up, then that's when you can explain to them, but they don't need to know every single detail in the rule book. So sorry, a little rant about that, but moving on to the next question which is favorite snack to eat while playing board games. Our go-to is always boba. We are very, very big on milk teas and fruit teas, for the most part, usually milk teas. And we always, always have boba for game night, um, especially when our friends are over. But for food though, I usually don't snack in general, even if it's not like a game night. If anything, it would be chips, but we don't really eat chips while playing games because obviously your fingers get dirty. And I'm not really a big on, I'm not a big candy person either, so yeah, just probably just boba. That's probably it for our snacks. Jackie, however, loves like Sour Patch Kids. So there's that. <laughs> okay, next up. Have you ever been to a board game convention? If so, which ones? I have only been to Dice Tower West. I was so happy that I made it out there and met so many friends and got to play games with them too. So that was really fun. I'm hoping to go to Gen Con. I'm trying, I don't know yet. I'm like 50-50 on that and maybe PAX Unplugged, it might be both conventions. If things work out, I'd love to be at both. But those two are the only ones on my radar currently. And next up, an unreleased game you are most looking forward to. Ooh. Well, most recently, it was definitely Arx that we played on stream. I like genuinely am very, very excited about that game. But let me see if I backed any games real quick. Let's see, aside from Arx, Bark Avenue, really excited about that game by uh, Terra Dice. They are fellow content creators that launched this really cool game all about dogs and I love dogs, of course. So I'm really excited about that one. Steam Up, made a whole video about that. Hopefully that's the very first board game I get to play with my parents. Those are the big ones that I have for now, at least the ones that I've backed on Kickstarter. Oh my God, Septima looks so freaking good by Mind Clash Games. I'm really excited about that one too. And yeah, those are the ones I can think of. Okay, the final question of the day which is, what is your favorite thing about this hobby? Let me get sappy here for a little second because it actually, this question hits home, especially after yesterday. So yesterday, my friend came over at Reams and we played Aquatica. And I, I don't know what it is about me lately. Maybe it's because I'm, I don't know, getting older, 30, whatever. But I like cherish a lot of moments that I regretted in the past. Like in, before in undergrad and grad school, I was always like head down in books trying to study and learn and just, there were a lot of missed moments. Like there are a lot of times that I regret not going to family outings, not hanging out with friends, not spending time because I was just like deep into studying and just not, not focused about anything else. And at that time when I was younger, I just was saying like, oh, we'll, we'll go out next year or we'll go camping later this fall, whatever. I always pushed everything back. And nowadays I feel like I'm trying to live in the moment a lot more, which is like making me happier making my family a lot happier too because they get to see me more often too. But yeah, my friend Reams is out of state. You might see her on a playthrough soon too, hopefully if I can get her to film in here, but she's out of state. And when we were playing yesterday, playing Aquatica, I didn't realize like how much fun I'm having. Like as a board gamer, you know the feeling of seeing someone's eyes light up when they're learning a game and when they're having fun, when they are interested in learning, like playing with you and they're open to learning new games. Like that feeling is just, it just hits home. That's the best way to put it. Okay. I know I said it a million times already, but it just hits home and it feels good. It feels really, really good. And it makes me happy. That's what I love most about the hobby is just teaching a game that people are open to, open to learning, open to playing and just games that bring people together. Like that's why I love the hobby so much. We get to spend so much more time with people 
even if it's just playing games, like there are moments that we remember from those nights every single time when we enjoy these games together. So that's my little, that's my little answer to that question. But yeah, that's my favorite thing about the hobby and that's why I enjoy it so much and why I continue to enjoy it after all these years. So thanks for watching this video. Thanks for getting some, taking some time to get to know me. And now it's time to tag some fellow creators too. I don't know if these creators have been tagged yet, but if they are, you know, feel free to make a video about this too or not, totally fine, it's up to you. But I wanted to tag our family plays games, Mick and Starla. You're up next. And of course, my other half, Lord of the Board, Sam. I want to hear these questions from you too. I also want to tag Amy and Maggie from Thinker Themer. Of course, I'm dying to see their answers to this, especially their board game pet peeves. That'd be really fun. I don't know why I found it so funny, but ever since Amy revealed that she loves dice, like as a board game, it wasn't pet peeve, like a board game exploit. I totally forgot the word here. I'm going to put it up here with the word that I was looking for. But ever since Amy told us that she loves rolling dice, I'm dying to hear her answers to all these questions too. And then lastly, I want to tag Billy Indiana. Billy, you're up next. I can't wait to see what you say and to get to know you more too. So thank you all so much for being here as always. And I will see you all in the next one. And also this is a random one too. I've only experienced this with like a few people, but sometimes people like to take their cards and just like curl it. And I'm like, why? <laughs> it like makes my eye like literally twitch. Like why would you? curve the cards and like why would you why would you fold the cards to the point where you can't unfold them like why do you need to put so much pressure on a thin piece of cardboard somebody tell me